chapter two. Have you ever noticed that most people say, I could care less, when what they really mean to say is that they couldn't care less? Melody's father asked as they walked into the grocery store together. He was always pointing things out like that, which was why, even though she was only 10, Melody knew that it was champing at the bit, not chomping, and that the expression, the proof is in the pudding, was actually the proof of the pudding is in the eating. What do you want me to get? She asked her father. They always split up the shopping list to save time. There were only a few things on it today, so while her father headed off to the dairy aisle to get milk and grated cheese, Melody went in search of spaghetti. Oh, and we need cereal too, he called back over his shoulder. Nothing too sugary, okay, Mel? She was reaching for the raisin bran when she noticed an eyelash stuck to the tip of her finger. Carefully transferring the eyelash from her fingertip to the back of her left hand, she closed her eyes, made a wish, and blew. When she opened her eyes, a woman in a tight black dress was strolling by, pushing a shopping cart. She glanced over at Melody and stopped short. I'd know that face anywhere, she exclaimed, and proceeded to march right over and throw her arms around Melody. Melody had never seen this person before in her life and was debating whether to punch her in the stomach or scream bloody murder when her father showed up with a gallon jug of 2% milk in one hand and a container of Parmesan cheese in the other. The minute the woman caught sight of him, she let go of Melody and threw her arms around him instead. There you are, you handsome devil, you, she cried. Here I am, Melody's father said, awkwardly holding the jug of milk out to one side and trying to pat the woman on the back with the hand still clutching the cheese. I've missed you, Henry, the woman said, hugging him even tighter. When she finally let go, Melody's father made the necessary introductions. Mel, this is Nancy Montgomery, an old friend of your mother's and mine. Nancy, this is Melody, the woman said. I knew it the minute I saw her. How do you do, Melody exclaimed, extending her right hand, partially to be polite, but mostly to make up for the fact that she'd come very close to punching this woman in the stomach a minute ago. Instead of shaking hands, Nancy burst into tears. You were just a wee little thing the last time I saw you, and look at you now, all grown up and wanting to shake hands. The way she said it made Melody feel like a dog. Even with the short haircut the woman went on, I, know, I knew who you were. You're the spitting image of your mother. Melody's father shifted uncomfortably. There isn't a day that passes that I don't think about your mother, the woman said, breaking into a fresh round of tears. Please, Nancy, Melody's father said quietly. I'm sorry. The woman pulled a tissue out of her purse and blew her nose. She was so young, and I remember how much she was looking forward to having, please, Nancy, Melody's father implored. This is neither the time nor the place. As far as Melody could tell, her father never felt it was the right time or place to talk about her mother. Melody had once asked him to tell her about the day her mother had died. It was the first time she'd ever seen him cry, and she'd never brought up the subject again. Meanwhile, Melody's father wasn't the only one who avoided talking about her mother. She had been the closest thing to a celebrity Royal Indiana had ever known, but nobody ever mentioned her name anymore, at least not around Melody. Having recovered her composure, Nancy informed them that the reason she was in town was because her family was having a reunion. The theme is cherished moments of yesteryear. The name was my idea, she said proudly. Nancy and Melody's father made small talk for a while. Then after promising to keep in touch, they said their goodbyes, which resulted in more awkward hugging. You don't hear that expression very often anymore, Melody's father said later as they left the store with groceries. Cherished moments of yesteryear, you mean, asked Melody. Her father laughed. No, spitting image. There's an ongoing debate about its origin. One sign claims it was originally spit and image. The other insists that spit is actually a southern pronunciation of spirit. Melody considered asking her father if he thought she looked like her mother too, but decided against it. They had reached the corner and were standing side by side on the curb waiting to cross the street. Why is this light taking so long to change, Melody complained. There's hardly even any traffic. Patience is a virtue, her father said. Melody rolled her eyes. I knew you were going to say that, she told him. The light changed and they started across. So you think I'm predictable, do you? Her father asked. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a packet of wild berry Skittles. Hey, Melody exclaimed. Where did those come from? I had the cashier ring them up when you weren't looking. What do you think of your old man now? Melody's father handed her the candy, clearly pleased that he'd been able to pull off the surprise. He, more than anyone, knew how hard it was to keep a secret from her. Can I eat them now, she asked. I promise it won't spoil my appetite. Far be it from me to stand between a girl and her Skittles, he said. After they got home and put away the groceries, Melody set the table while her father got dinner started. They were having spaghetti with canned Chef Boyardee meat sauce, one of a grand total of three meals Melody's father knew how to prepare. As he placed the pot of water on the stove to boil, he suddenly remembered something he had been meaning to ask. Did you get your math test back today? Melody groaned. 
I was hoping you'd forgotten. Her father opened the drawer and started rummaging around. Mel, have you seen the... It's over there, she said, pointing to the can opener, which was in the silverware section of the dish drain. Tell me what happened, he said as he cranked the opener around the metal rim of the can. Chef Boyardee looked on disapprovingly from the label. It was all Miss Hogan's fault, Melody said. Melody's father was used to hearing her complain about her teacher. Thanks to Miss Hogan, the only positive thing Melody had to say about fifth grade was that it was almost over. I got a 73, Melody said, as she opened the cupboard and handed him the bottle of olive oil. He twisted off the cap, poured a few drops into the water, and passed it back. 73, he said. How did that happen? Melody used one cup of sugar to make two cherry pies. How much sugar on average did Mary use in each pie? What was your answer? I said that on average, Mary used half a cup of sugar in each pie. Melody's father furrowed his brow. Huh? That's what I would have said too. Then you would have been wrong because the answer is 0 0.5. Something sputtered on the stove and Melody grabbed a wooden spoon off the counter and handed it to her father. I'm no mathematician, but isn't 0 0.5 the same thing as one half? He asked as he lowered the flame and stirred down the sauce. Miss Hogan told us all the answers had to be in decimals, Melody explained, but she didn't use decimals in some of the questions. She was trying to trick us. Did anybody else fall for it? Nick did, said Melody. He tried to talk to Miss Hogan into changing his grade by telling her that he watches the Food Network all the time and no one ever says 0 0.5 of a cup of anything in real life. We could use someone like him on the debate team, said Melody's father, his eyes twinkling with amusement. You may think it's funny, but I don't. I hate word problems, said Melody, and I hate Miss Hogan even more. You know how I feel about that word, Melody's father said sternly. I know. Miss Hogan doesn't like me either. She doesn't get any of my jokes, and she thinks math is fun. I wish I could have had Miss McKenna again this year. Her father nodded. No doubt about it, you two were a very good fit, he said, rinsing out the empty sauce can and tossing it into the recycling bin. But I'm sure Miss Hogan has her virtues too. Did you know that she and Miss McKenna are good friends? I always see them sitting together at district staff meetings. Really? asked Melody. Ask her yourself, he said. And while you're at it, why don't you ask her if you can retake the test or do some extra credit homework to bring up that grade? I'm sure she can be a very nice person if you give her a chance. Melody suddenly smelled something burning. Dad, the sauce! The smoke detector started screeching and Melody's father swatted at it with a dish towel until it stopped. I'm glad I'm not the only one who has to scrub out the pan, said Melody. I don't mind, said her father. He had been in such a good mood lately, nothing seemed to faze him. As he served up the biscotti and set the steaming plates on the table, he started whistling, You Are My Sunshine Again. What is it about you and that song, asked Melody. Melody's father reached over and tasseled her hair. Give me a break. Can a fellow whistle a happy tune around here if he wants to, he asked. But Melody couldn't shake the feeling that her father was hiding something from her. One way or another, she was determined to find out what it was.